If you want to take your outline effects to the next level in Affinity Designer, then the Contour tool is a must-know feature. This simple little tool can have some surprisingly complicated effects, so let's check it out. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Contour tool. But before we get to that, I want you to know that I'm working on a one hour long Affinity Designer beginner course that's gonna be posted right here on this channel in a few weeks. Of course, it's gonna be free and open to all of you. So if you wanna be notified when it comes out, subscribe to this channel, and hopefully you'll see it at the beginning of September. Without further ado, let's jump into today's video. At a high level, what the Contour tool does is allow you to shift the stroke of an object inward or outward. Sounds kind of abstract, but let's take a look at what it does. So I have this square here, rectangle, and what I'm gonna do is use the Contour tool. And it's over here. This is another one of those tools that the icon changed recently, so older documentation, it might look different, but I'm gonna click this button. And what happens is you get this handle on top of your object. And what I can do is I can drag it left or right. And you can see what it's doing is it's pushing the stroke inwards or outwards, like so. Now you don't need a stroke for this to work. I can actually take it off here. And you still get the, the effect. But I'm gonna have strokes on for this video just because I think it's easier to see what's actually happening. Now it isn't just strokes that are affected. Here I have a line segment and I'll select the contour tool. And you can see the handle is here. Watch what happens when I drag it left and right. You can again see that it's kind of like it's pushing these strokes away from the main path of where it would normally go. And this can also happen with more complicated strokes. So this is a more complicated line. Let's use a contour tool. And we get this kind of effect. I'll give more detail on that later. And probably one of the most popular usages of the contour tool is with text. So here I have some text. Let's give it like a, a black border. I'll make it a little thicker. And then with it selected, I'll use the contour tool. Now, just using the contour tool on the text itself usually doesn't look that great. I don't get that much benefit from it. The way it really becomes powerful is when you actually copy the text below itself. So let me, I have this text here. I'm just gonna control C and control V that layer. So what I'll do is I'll click this layer underneath my text. I'll give it some type of like purplish color. And now if I take the contour tool, this is the text that's below it. If I drag it out, I start to get this bubbly effect. And this can be used really well to like build up complicated titles or more sophisticated kind of designs for like book covers. Let me um, copy it again. So you can keep going like as much as you want. And of course this is still fully editable. So this text, I can change it to whatever I want. Now I have to change all of them. I did have Affinity crash when I tried to change all the fonts at once. So I won't do that, but I'll do this one. So it's quite editable and very flexible. I also want to give a quick heads up of something that seems to be a bug in Affinity Designer. If you have an artboard and you try to use the contour tool on text, it doesn't seem to work very well. Um, it kind of breaks. If I drag it off the screen, it seems to work, which of course isn't that helpful. But um, it seems like if the text is actually on the artboard, something isn't quite going right there. So, so just make sure that you know if you're using artboards, probably the contour tool isn't going to work. Okay, let's start to look at these toolbar options and see what we can do here. You notice with the contour type, we have these different types of edges and they seem pretty self-explanatory. So if I expand it, well, right now I have the sharp edge, but I can do the round edge also. And if you don't like the, the radius, you can change it through here. We also have the beveled edges, so that's that. And if you drag it in and out, the effect is gonna be different. Usually when you pull it in, there's, there's not much of an effect there. And there's also this concept of a miter, which is really going to kind of determine when your bevel cuts off. Um, I usually don't see too much of an effect of it, but sometimes, depending on wh where you're at, it might be relevant for you. So the contour caps are going to be relevant when you have like a single stroke here. So I'll do the none. Let's see what happens. You can see this is the effect we saw before. It just kind of does that. I'll do rounded. You can see now it's kind of almost like a pill type shape. And this other one. It's also kind of squarish, but it's different from that first one. The first one just goes to the, to the extent of the lines, whereas this one actually goes out from the top and bottom also. So those are relevant for straight lines. Now let's look at these fill options. So I think by default, auto close is selected, which won't really do anything different than we saw already. I'll just do this, but let's select force open. This will be apparent when I have shapes like this. You can see what's happening now is it's kind of drawing away from the line that defines our shape here. So I'll do it with the star and you can see it has that kind of effect. Force closed is going to be relevant for curves here. So I'll select force closed and with this curve, I'll move it back and forth 
And you can see it's just closing the, the gap that was there. And if this was filled, let's say with something like this, the same thing would happen. Okay, so let's look at some demos with some shapes here. So I'll draw a star and let's make it yellow. And I'll give one of the presets here. Let's do this one. Now what's really interesting about this contour tool is it has definitely unusual effects that you wouldn't expect. So let's select the contour tool here. And if I apply it to my star, we start to get pretty cool designs here. And this is all still editable. So I can go and I can change the properties of my star. And I can move these things in and out. All sorts of really like unusual things. It's hard to predict and I think that's kind of the fun of it is just trying different designs and seeing what works in the end. It gets really interesting when you drag certain parts inwards a lot, I think. I could do a double star. Let's see what, looks, let's see what that looks like. We get this kind of effect going. Just lots of like really unusual things. Now by far one of the coolest effects you can get is when you use compound shapes with the contour tool. So I made a video about compound shapes. It's on my channel, so check that out. But what I'll do is I'll create these two circles and I'll make a compound shape from them. And you can see it's over here. Now if I drag these two spheres together, nothing too crazy happens. But watch what happens if I actually use the contour tool and make them a little bit smaller. Now the key thing is to make them smaller, not bigger. So bring the edges inward. And then if I drag them close to each other, you get this crazy like magnetic effect almost. Now I was kind of wondering why is that happening? And you know, I think the reason it's happening is because this is actually what the spheres look like. This is what the circles look like. They're kind of overlapped. And then the contour tool, well, inside the compound, you're anding them together and then you're doing this internal shape. So basically, I guess what it's doing is this, and that's applying the contour tool to the difference of that. So you're basically doing that inside this compound shape, but you're doing it dynamically. So let me delete these so they don't confuse you. It's just a cool effect. You don't really need to know how it works, but I like to figure that stuff out. So you can see it has this, again, kind of stringy effect there. And if you drag other objects into there, it'll automatically work. So let's bring them over. Now this is kind of happening. Just lots of crazy stuff you can do. What does the Pi tool look like if we bring it in? Get some type of Pi thing going there. Sometimes you definitely notice like really strange things happening. Like in here, you can see that. It's kind of one of those things where you just have to like randomly do stuff and see what looks cool. I think it's a really interesting effect and something you can do a lot with. Now something I think is cool is you can create line segments and then you can actually use the contour tool on them. So if you create a compound here, and then if you select those elements, you can start using the contour tool on them. It's at the group level here, so I'll make that a little bit smaller. And what I think is interesting about this is it could be used to like make like street maps and stuff like that. So let's say I copy this, let's rotate it. Maybe make like a map for your business or something like that. You could put little street signs if you wanted. Maybe other decorations. So you can build up a little map like this, but you know, definitely lots of like interesting little things you can do with compound shapes and the contour tool. So that's the contour tool. I think it's one of those things that still has lots of hidden secrets, probably lots of cool tricks and effects you can do with it. If you know anything cool, feel free to drop a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.